Hello, I'm High Heel Knight, and today I'm doing something very interesting. I have a double rental review. Uh, I went to rent this movie called The Final Girls, and when I was in the process of renting it, I noticed there was another movie in the kiosk that said Final Girl. So I was like, oh, what? what's this? Uh, so I rented The Final Girls, and then I went online to check out uh, the synopsis of Final Girl. I was like, oh, okay, that could be interesting too. So after a couple of days, I read it, Final Girl. Now, since both these titles are so similar, both these titles both came out in 2015, and surprisingly, both of these movies feature Alexander Ludwig. Uh, Alexander plays a hero in one movie and a villain in another movie. I decided, well, to make things less confusing for myself and whoever might be uh, enjoying my channel, I'll just review them together. So... Uh, we have, for the first time, uh, a double rental review. I give The Final Girls a B-, and I give Final Girl a D+. Okay, so first up we have The Final Girls. That's with the word the plus the plural form of girl. The Final Girls is a story about a group of teens that go to see a horror film festival and wind up falling into the movie that they wanted to go see. Uh, now this sort of concept has been done several times, but this is very interesting because they're going into a horror movie. Uh, the other interesting reason is that uh, one of the young ladies, uh, her name is Max, one of the actresses in the movie they're going to see was played by her mother. Uh, in the uh, real world, uh, the mother, Amanda, was a struggling actress. She did uh, this movie called Camp Bloodbath. That's the horror film that uh, these teens go to go see. Uh, and it was a major breakthrough for her, but she struggles to get out of that uh, caricature uh, as she ages. Uh, I like the idea of uh, someone trying to save a character because of the family relationship. I also love how she died. I won't say how the mom dies, but I personally love it because it, it reminds me of an annoyance in many, many, many movies. And I'm glad it happened the way it happened. I loved it, uh, the way she died. I, I wish more movies would do that. The daughter of uh, Max, She's apprehensive about seeing the film festival because she uh, still hasn't gotten over the loss of her mother. And certainly she doesn't want to go see a movie that's featuring her mom, plus the uh, character uh, Nancy uh, is gets uh, brutally killed, so she doesn't need to see her mom die all over again. But still, she gets convinced to go see the movie. And through bizarre circumstances, uh, she and her friends wind up falling into the Camp Bloodbath movie. And when they get into the Camp Bloodbath movie, uh, they have to survive uh, until the end. I give this movie a B minus, and there's uh, two main reasons. First reason, it doesn't really establish firmly how the rules of interacting with this uh, movie within the movie works. For instance, when the teens fall into the movie, they're in a forest, and just think they're in a forest, until they see the uh, movie characters come through, and then the movie characters leave. 93 minutes later, the movie characters come back through. So Duncan, this uh, super fan of horror movies and uh, this movie Camp Bloodbath, says, oh, wait a minute, let me try something. And he times it, and 93 minutes later again, the uh, uh, characters from the movie come passing through. So Duncan realizes that they got to get on the uh, van of the characters so they can progress the story. Otherwise, it'll just keep cycling over again. So, okay, okay, I figure this story takes place within 93 minutes, so basically uh, it takes place over one day. But no, the movie sort of takes place over uh, a day, or two, like two days, because it definitely goes in from day to night, and I think it goes uh, into the morning, so it's definitely much, much longer than 93 minutes, so already you're sort of mixing up your rules of how this works. Uh, another uh, thing is uh, Camp Bloodbath, this is where it really hurts the film, Camp Bloodbath, is a slasher movie like Friday the 13th. It's supposed to be gory, it's supposed to be violent, it's supposed to have sex and nudity and drugs 
and cursing. It's R-rated material. In fact, uh, the real people can see the credits or see subtitles or even realize when they're going into a flashback. Uh, so that sort of mixes up again rules of who can see what. But anyway, uh, when the Camp Bloodbath ends, it's, you know, it's the shot says, you know, this has been an R-rated film, but the final girls is PG-13, you know, and that just doesn't make any sense. Why would you try to pay homage to uh, a hard R property or concept, yet make it PG-13? I just hate it when they do that. For instance, they did that with the two of the Robocop movies, Robocop 3 and uh, uh, the Robocop remake. You know, they figure, okay, we make it PG-13, it gives a greater chance for the audience, but uh, no, that's, uh, that's not why those movies were successful. Those movies were successful because they had content that featured that hard R stuff. Uh, so that's what people love, that's people who want to see, and that's why the movies became popular. So, you know, it doesn't make sense in this, where you got a story that's clearly R-rated material trying to fit into a PG world. You got one character who's uh, the slut, all she wants to do is be naked and have lots of sex, and the uh, real characters are trying to stop her from doing that because she does that. They know that uh, Billy Murphy, the uh, Jason Voorhees type character, will appear and try to kill them all. Or we got another character who's this uh, jock who all he cares about is sex. So everything he says is sexual Hindu, or uh, he wants to drink, he wants to party, he wants to do whatever. Everything is a cliche. There's a, a black character that's an 80s cliche. Uh, there's a bad girl, tough girl character that's an 80s cliche. So it makes sense that they're paying homage to this 80s style of horror. Uh, but still, why would you make PG-13 movie with R-rated material? Just make an R-rated movie. Okay, now we'll say the actors are cool. The uh, uh, villains are cool. Uh, and how they decide to defeat the villain is uh, pretty good, and uh, it does sort of affirm that rule. That's sort of like the one rule they affirm and get right. But still, if the movie uh, just dealt with this rules a little more consistently, uh, it would have been better. Uh, so it's a very interesting story. It's funny. It's weird. But uh, it really should have been an R-rated uh, film. So that's why The Final Girls gets a B-. minus. Good movie, but it could have been better. It should have been better. B minus. Okay, and now we have Final Girl. And that's a no the and singular form of girl. I had a lot of hopes, high hopes for this movie. It was a very interesting concept. Uh, this young man, William, who recruits a little girl named Veronica, who seems to be very intelligent, uh, very adaptable. He raises her to be his uh, personal weapon against uh, men who prey uh, on women. Uh, so rapists, murderers, muggers, and things like that. The main story is that there's these four teenage guys. They seduce a young lady and they take her to the woods. And in the woods, they chase her down, hunt her down, and kill her uh, for sport. Uh, so they're all a little psychotic, and the leading guy played by Alexander Ludwig, he's like the main psychopath. So there was a lot of promises. Basically, it's supposed to be like a revenge movie. Uh, she's getting revenge on, on behalf of all the uh, uh, young ladies that they've slaughtered throughout their history. Uh, but the problem is, this movie wants to be mysterious, but it's doing it in the wrong way. Uh, about halfway through, I was getting more and more disappointed because there were so many things that didn't make sense, that were left unanswered, that was trying to be uh, unique but in the wrong way. The story just got worse and worse and worse and more confusing, more unrealistic, more bizarre. And by the time it ended, I was ready to give this movie an F. I just hated this movie by the end. However, when I watched the DVD extras, I learned that it was the director's first film. Uh, the director, his name is Tyler Shields. Uh, he specializes as a photographer. He does a lot of gory uh, and bloody themed uh, photo shoots. Uh, this is his first 
uh, motion picture. And I said, okay, fine. Well, this is your first movie. You're going to make uh, some mistakes. You're going to have uh, some growing pains. Okay, fine. I won't give you an F this time. So one of the major uh, mistakes ha happened is when uh, Veronica, when she's taken on her date, she has this gorgeous red dress and black high heels. Now, I love high heels. I'm definitely going to notice some black high heels because I am a high heel knight. Uh, and when she uh, escapes from the four guys right before they go to chase her, I say, okay, you got five minutes, but of course they're not going to give her the five minutes. Uh, go run off. She runs off in her heels. Uh, and then later on, she's fighting one of the guys, and I see uh, the character of Veronica. She's wearing combat boots. Now, at first, I thought this was a stunt performer uh, in her combat boots, and they just accidentally caught it on camera. That happens a lot in action scenes, not only in horror movies or suspense movies, just action in general. The female character is wearing heels, but uh, the uh, actor or uh, stunt person is wearing some type of flaps, and they actually just get on a camera. But no. Throughout the rest of the movie, or the story, she is wearing black combat boots. I was like, well, where did she get black combat boots from? So I rewatched some scenes again, and it turns out there's a moment when she's, uh, actually she runs off from the boys. Uh, she goes to a spot, and she leans down, and you hear a zipper sound, and she ties her head uh, back, and she's off and running. So apparently she did set up some stuff in the forest, uh, some, some boots, some ropes, and things like that, uh, in preparation, which is uh, fine, but you need to show the boots bees and you need to show her changing so I'm not wondering for a good five minutes where these boots come from. Immersion is very important. So I don't know if he, uh, the director filmed it and it didn't come out well. I don't know if they filmed it and it wasn't in the shot and just had to add the zipper sound and hope that no one noticed, but I <laughs> definitely want to notice. But that's just one of those, I guess you could say, rookie mistakes. Uh, you know, that uh, normally shouldn't ruin a movie, but since your, your movie already has a bunch of problems, any additional problems is going to come out worse. Another problem with this movie is that it seems you don't really understand who William is. It opens up with uh, a very young Veronica, which is a little girl, being talked to uh, by William, and it seems to be an interrogation room. And apparently, uh, Veronica's parents died. William says, uh, you know, your parents are dead. How do you feel about that? And she just responds, people die. And he says, well, that's an interesting attitude. And he gives her uh, this sheet of paper to do a, a, a maze, and she just does the maze immediately. She uh, takes one line, one attempt, and she does it. So they're trying to establish that she's very smart and capable. But I'm thinking, okay, she must be some type of genius or maybe she's like uh, some type of special gifted, maybe she's like a second powers. No, she's pretty much an ordinary girl with, uh, I guess, uh, a high, you know, a little bit adaptable, but nothing really major. Plus, we don't learn how the uh, parents died. I thought, well, maybe she actually killed her parents. Maybe she witnessed a murder or something like that. No, the parents are just dead. And William, apparently, uh, I think his wife and daughter or some type of uh, member of his family were killed. So he wants to recruit Veronica and turn him into his personal weapon to go uh, after men, and I do mean men that prey on women. The murderers, the rapists, uh, the muggers, uh, you know, the assaults and things like that, or people that are abusive to their spouses. He just wants to get revenge on those men, which would have been fine, but it's presented that he's some type of actual authority figure. He's like, I know all this time and money to train you. He trains her in weapons. He trains her in martial arts. He gives some type of stupid Yoda philosophy about how uh, anyone can, everyone's equal, you know, all depends on what your willpower is, which is a bunch of crap. In the Minibat movie, uh, they are a secret organization that monitors extraterrestrials on Earth. So uh, James Dower Edward III, he asks Agent K, well, why don't we just go public? You know, people are smart. And Agent K says, a person smart, people are dumb, panicky, idiots, uh, animals, and you know it. So that's why they got to be secret. And then when uh, James becomes Agent J, you know, he's like, we don't have time for this cover-up stuff. 
you know, you got some uh, alien battle cruiser or something, and Agent K says, well, there's always an alien battle cruiser or a intergalactic plague or some type of big disaster waiting to destroy life on this planet. And uh, the reason why people get along and, and, and can exist is because they do not know about it. So you know why they're secretive. Uh, but in this movie, we don't know why they're secretive. How does William find these four guys? There's a scene where William and Veronica are watching the four men outside of their favorite diner. It's like, wait, hey, there's your targets. I'm like, wait a minute, you know where they are. And earlier in the movie, you were training her in the forest where they do their hunting. So you know where they are, you know where they operate. You probably know where some of the bodies are out there. Why don't you just go to the police? I'm expecting a scene where they go to the police and it turns out that one of the young men is like the son of the mayor or some uh, type of authority figure or some type of rich person that has an iron grip on the town. And that's why they keep getting away with these murders and murders and murders. But no, uh, William just finds these people. And there's other scenes where Veronica is sent to uh, attack these other would-be uh, assailants or, and rapists. Uh, and it's like, you know who these people are. Why aren't you going to the police? Uh, again, another comparison, Batman. The reason why Bruce Wayne becomes Batman is because there's corruption uh, in the police, there's corruption in the mayor's office, there's corruption all over Gotham City, so he doesn't know who to trust. So uh, that's why he has to go outside the law to make sure that the good people uh, bring in the bad guys and make sure that the bad people are punished and not rescued by the even badder corrupt people. You know, they, that's why he works outside the system. But here, it seems that William is pretty much just as psychotic because it doesn't seem to be really answered to anybody. During the end credits, there's someone typing on a typewriter, and I do mean a typewriter, not a word processor even, not an iPad or a computer, the actual typewriter. It's like, okay, is he writing his report, or is this some weird way to uh, end the movie with all these crazy imagery, because there's other crazy imagery. Again, once I knew that it was the director's first time, that's probably why we don't have all these explanations of who does what. There's there's the right way to do mystery and the wrong way to do mystery. The right way to do mystery is give enough clues so the audience is like, ooh, I would love to more and more, or mm, that seems interesting. I'm wondering how that came about. Or, you know, ooh, that's so weird and mysterious. That's interesting. Then there's the wrong way to do mystery. It was like, what? what? Where did she get boots? Uh, how did she get that guy up there? What does this drug do? What, what are these pandas? Who do you report to? Why did you train Veronica to learn how to use guns if you don't want her to use guns? If you know where these people are, why don't you just kill her yourself? Why are you wasting time training this young lady to take revenge on men unless you just, I guess, love the idea of women being the aggressors? There's a wonderful movie named Hard Candy. In the movie Hard Candy, it's about... Uh, this uh, pedophile who meets up with this young lady, but it turns out the young lady is actually uh, psychotic and is uh, turning the tables on him. That's a much better movie, much better characterization, much more interesting. Uh, so if you want to see some type of, uh, the victim is actually the uh, murderer, uh, check out Hard Candy. That's much better than this movie. It just got worse and worse in the ending. My goodness, I wish I would spoil the ending, but I'm not going to do that. But I will say I just hated the ending. It just got worse and worse and worse for me. So this movie uh, is a D plus. I don't recommend it at all unless uh, you just really want to see some type of a weird movie for your evening or if you want to uh, make the double comparison of Final Girl with The Final Girls or if you really love uh, Alexander Ludwig, you know, <laughs> other than that, avoid this movie. I give it uh, the rating that it deserves. Okay, so just to recap this double review, we have The Final Girls. Uh, that movie gets a B minus. It was uh, funny. It was interesting. It was a great uh, new twist on the whole story within the story idea, but it was R-rated material somehow trying to be put into a PG-13 movie, and I feel that hurts the movie much more than helps it. Uh, and Final Girl, oh goodness, it was just terrible. Great premise, uh, fantastic actors, beautiful uh, beautiful use of color and darks and lights. 
But uh, yeah, the story just got worse and worse and worse. Too many questions, too many uh, impossibilities, too many things weird for weirdness sake. And it should have been an F, but because it was the director's first time and because the uh, actors and the setting are so strong, I'm giving it a D plus. Both released in 2015, both featuring Alexander Ludwig. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like or dislike the video, whichever you prefer. And remember to subscribe to my channel. I'm High Hill Knight. Find inspiration everywhere.